So, you're interested in narrating audiobooks, but you don't know where to start, and you don't know what equipment you need. In this video, I'm going to address one of those things. Let's talk about equipment. What is up my friend? Ryan May here from the Home Audio Project. Before I begin, I want to mention if you're new to this channel, or you're new to audiobook narration, or even having an interest in audiobook narrating, and you're not exactly sure where to start, I have a free guide that I want to send you. It's a simple PDF that breaks down the four main components you need to get started in your narration journey. I call this the four-step narrator. Even if you don't have any experience at all, I want to help you with it. And this guide will give you the starting points. And it's absolutely free. So click the link in the description and download it. So breaking down the pieces of gear needed can seem very overwhelming. But I promise it can be affordable based on your financial status. And trust me when I say that in even just one audiobook, it will pay for itself. And before we begin though, I want to mention that when buying audio gear, I highly recommend that you go through some audio sales dealer like Sweetwater.com. To break this down very quickly in a standardized list formation, here's everything you need to build your home studio for narration. Okay. So let's get the list started. And the first piece of gear is a computer. And here are a couple of main specs that you should have. Just make sure it has a good processor and a decent amount of RAM. And just keep in mind, the more RAM you have, the better the performance of your computer will be. And lastly for the computer is the internal storage. I personally like having anywhere from 500 gigs to one terabyte worth of storage. That way, you know you're always covered. But with an added bonus, I would also suggest getting some type of external hard drive or a cloud service as well. And also, depending on how old or new your computer is, will dictate the type of external connections that you can accommodate. Let's move on to the audio interface. Now, if you're not familiar, the audio interface is the connection point basically between your computer and your audio software. So your microphone plugs into your audio interface and then your audio interface plugs into your computer. In audiobook narration, look for an audio interface that has one microphone input. So here's a quick rundown of interfaces that you can get that are very affordable. The Focusrite Scarlett Solo, it's 120 US dollars. Presonus has a couple that are just under 200 US dollars. And they also have interfaces that start around 100 US dollars. And there are a lot of audio interfaces out there. So check around for what works for you and your budget. Again, check the type of connections the interface has as to what your needs are with your computer. And pro tip, on any of these pieces of gear, search by customer reviews. That way you can verify from others that have purchased the item whether or not it's worth it. Now, moving on, let's talk microphones. Now, I'm not going to bore you with the science behind polar patterns. In most vocal recording, there are two types of microphones commonly used. And that is a condenser microphone or a dynamic microphone. Condensers are more sensitive, but they do give more clarity and presence. But dynamics are just good for overall general vocal production. A couple of go-tos for most narrators starting out is Audio-Technica's AT2020. It's 100 US dollars, and it has a fairly neutral response, meaning that it's pretty much great for any voice. But you can find package deals as well, where you get a microphone, a pair of headphones, and a mounting boom stand for around 200 US dollars. So let's move on to recording software. This is of course how we record our voice, edit our performance, and master or finalize our final recording and put it out into the world. Now, more narrators starting out use Reaper because it's completely customizable and it has all of the features you need to fully produce an audiobook and it runs around 60 US dollars. And some low cost honorable mentions though are Audacity. 
which is completely free. Twisted Wave is another popular one that I hear about all the time in the audiobook world, and that runs around 100 US dollars. Now, if you're on a Mac, there are options completely free as well. GarageBand. Admittedly though, it's a little hard to get precision editing, but it does have all the tools necessary to get the job done. Up next, tablets. Authors and publishers send their books in PDF form these days. There's a wide array of tablets to choose from, and as always with anything on this list, pick one that works for you. There is the iPad in whatever version works for your budget, from the iPad Air series to the Mini or the Pro. And if you're not the Apple type, there are others out there like the Samsung Galaxy, the Microsoft Surface, in whatever version you want. Now let's move on to PDF readers. You can always use your computer's built-in PDF reader like Max Preview or Windows Reader app, but I would say when managing recording software at the same time, it can become a lot of work toggling between your script and your software. If you do choose to use a tablet, I recommend looking at some of these notation apps for your tablet. There's Adobe Acrobat Reader, PDF Element, Foxit, Notability, PDF Expert, and honestly my personal favorite, iAnnotate. These are all great options for those who need to mark up scripts, especially when you have pronunciations that you're not sure of or character voices that you wanna mark and that you wanna keep track of. Okay, only five more remaining. I'll try to wrap this up so you can get to building your home studio and start recording more books. Now, microphone cables go hand in hand like PB and J. And yeah, I realize that. That sounds uh, extremely corny, but what's connecting your microphone to your interface, giving you the ability to record your performance? A microphone cable. XLR cables are the way to go for this. And the good thing about audiobook narrating and having all of your gear sitting right in front of you, short cables. And short cables tend to mean less expensive. Now again, I hate to bore you with science, so I'll keep this really, really short. The reason why I mentioned XLR cables is because they're balance cables. That means that they avoid electronic interference from any outside source or any other equipment you have sitting around, like my speakers and my computer. And getting something like a three foot to a five foot length of cable is perfect for most home studios. So here are a couple of brands to take a look at. There's Hosa, Monoprice, Proco, and honestly, even Amazon Basics will work. Now these all range in variations of price, but you can get them between 10 US dollars and 50 US dollars, just depending on the version you buy. Now, weird question, closed back headphones or open back headphones? What does that mean, Ryan? Well, in basic terms, closed back will block out more potential outside distractions then open back or semi open back based on the room you're in. And in this case, your home studio or narrator booth. And again, I recommend getting a middle of the road pair that sound great and give you the clarity and neutral response that's just needed for voice recording. Now I have the AKG K240s and they start around 70 US dollars brand new. But of course, here's a list of go-tos as well. AKG's K92's close back. They're around 60 US dollars. Sony's MDR 7506 close back headphones. 100 US dollars. Sennheiser HD 280 Pro close backs. And those are around 100 US dollars. Earbuds are a great option as well. So if you don't want huge pads sitting around your ears and you just want something that you can simply plug into your ears and get to narrating, definitely use earbuds. Mic stands, although very basic, it's a necessity for sure. So when it comes to a mic stand, there's tabletop mic stands 
And then there's clamp style clip on boom arm mic stands that are very similar to what I use in my recording sessions. And I would say it really just depends how animated you get. Now, if you're one like me that talks with their hands and you're one to flail your arms around when you're really getting into a scene, then maybe a boom arm is your type. If you have the room on your desk or table and you prefer a tabletop mic stand, then definitely do it, right? Any of these styles range in between 15 US dollars and 40 US dollars, and that depends on the durability and whatever you prefer. If you're recording audio, your room does matter. Now the size of your room should preferably be small, and I would say deaden it as much as possible. When on a budget and starting out, getting something like thick moving blankets or even going to a big box store like Walmart and buying egg crate mattress foam is a great start. And when you have your studio all set up, just listen back to your recording after treating it and then make any adjustments necessary to get it as quiet as possible. Okay, we have reached the final piece of gear selection and that is storage. Now, audiobook files can be extremely large, especially when you're recording a book that is anywhere from eight to 10 hours long or longer. And because of this, I suggest looking into some type of cloud storage. Now your audiobook can live on your computer while you're recording your audiobook. I highly recommend getting cloud storage or an external hard drive, at least just some place you can store the original recorded audio session once you're done with your final recording. Now the big reason is because usually when you're done recording the audiobook, your recording is going to go through a process of quality control with the author or the publisher, and they may come back to you with changes or some type of correction that they want. Now for cloud storage, there are tons out there and they do range in price, but because it is cloud-based, you can easily log in and upload or download whatever you need, whenever you need to. There's Dropbox, there's Google Drive, there's pCloud, and then there's Amazon's AWS S3. Now, some offer a decent amount of storage for free, but if you want more, and in most cases, you'll need more, the more books you do. And they're all price-based options out there based on your needs. Okay, so there you have it. All the essential gear to setting up your home studio for narration. Before you go, when you're completely new to audiobooks and you're not sure where to start, that I have my free guide for you. Now, it's called the Four Step Narrator. Now, it's a simple PDF that walks you through the steps of understanding performance through listening to audiobooks to actually landing your first paid audiobook to narrate. Just click the bit.ly link in the description to get started. All right, well, I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you have a great day, and I'll see you in another video real soon.